Welcome to the Common Counseling of DMIT Report. DMIT stands for Dermatoglyphics Multiple Intelligence Testing. Dermato is skin, glyphics are the ridges on the skin. The technology is this. Brain has two hemispheres. There's a left hemisphere and there's a right hemisphere. From the front to the back, there are five clear portions on both the sides of the brain. Behind the forehead, these portions are called as prefrontal portions. Behind this are postfrontal portions. In the center of the head are parietal portions. In between the two ears, these are temporal portions. And behind the two eyes, right at the back, these are occipital portions. So there are five portions on the left side. There are five portions on the right side of the brain. The five portions of the left brain are connected to the five fingers of the right hand. And the five portions of the right brain are connected to the five fingers of the left hand. When God gives a special talent to a human being, the portion of the brain which controls that talent becomes a little healthy. And the finger connected to that portion will show healthy fingerprints. When God keeps a certain talent less in a particular person, the portion of the brain which controls that talent remains a little weaker and the finger connected to that portion of the brain will show weaker fingerprints. So we scan the fingerprints of people and analyze this data in the software of the brain which gives us the DMIT report. As you can see in the report, the brain picture in the center. There are two portions of the brain shown on the left side and there are three portions of the brain shown on the right side. The lower portion on the left side is the prefrontal portion. This is connected to the first finger which means thumbs. The left brain prefrontal is connected to the right thumb. The right brain prefrontal is connected to the left thumb. The upper portions are the postfrontal portions. This is connected to the second finger which means the index finger. The left brain postfrontal connected to right index finger and the right brain postfrontal connected to the left index finger. Now come to the right side of the brain picture. The top two boxes are the parietal portions of the brain. These are connected to the middle fingers. Again left brain parietal to the right middle finger and right brain parietal to the left middle finger. The bottom two boxes on the right side are the temporal portions in between the two ears. The left brain temporal is connected to right ring finger. The right brain temporal is connected to left ring finger. And the two portions in the middle on the right side of the brain picture, these are occipital portions connected to the little fingers. Left brain occipital connected to right little finger and right brain occipital connected to the left little finger. Now this is TFRC. TFRC stands for Total Finger Ridge Count. That means ridges is the lines on the fingerprints. And total finger ridge count means the number of lines counted on all the 10 fingers of the two hands of the person. Now this number here is 94.46. In some cases it may be 140, 150, 200, 250 as well. Now this number being less or more has no significance. This is like saying somebody has a big nose or somebody has a small nose. Now just because a person has a big nose doesn't mean he can smell more. Similarly more lines does not mean a person is more intelligent. This is just a number. This is the count of the 10 fingers of both the hands put together. Now when we divide this by 10 we get the average. In this case the average is 9.45 per finger. Now if the count is 250, the average would be 250 by 10 which means 25. If the count is 150, the average would be 150 by 10 which means 15. So I am explaining this particular report in which the average is 9.45. From this average, plus 3 or greater than that is strength, minus 3 or less than that is weakness. When I'm saying plus 3 or greater than that, average is 9.45, plus 3 is 12.45. Any finger having more than 12.45 lines, the connected brain portion is strong. And when I'm saying minus 3, 9.45 minus 3 is 6.45. Any finger having less than 6.45 lines, the connected brain portion is weak. From 6.45 
to 9.45, we will call this as average minus. From 9.45 to 12.45, we will call this as average plus. More than 12.45 is strength, less than 6.45 is weakness. This is the formula for this child. The formula for your child may be different depending on what the TFRC is. So taking the average per finger, average line count per finger, we now proceed to determine which areas of the brain are strong, which areas of the brain are average plus, which areas of the brain are average minus, or which areas of the brain are weak for this particular report. So in this case, the prefrontal left brain is 11.39 count, which means this is average plus. It is more than 9.45, but not more than 12.45. So this is average plus. Prefrontal right brain is 12.42. This is almost strength. 12.45 would be strength. 12.42 is almost strength. The postfrontal left brain 14.04 is strength and in fact slightly more than strength so we would call it as S plus. The postfrontal right brain is 14.63 so we would call this also as S plus. Coming to the right side parietal portions the left brain parietal count is 7.56 which means this is average minus. The right brain parietal is 10.13 so this is average plus. Come to the temporal portions at the bottom. Left brain temporal is 6.21. This is weak. Right brain temporal is also 6.21. This also is weak. Come to the middle two portions. Occipital left brain is 5.40. So this is bigger weakness. I'll write W minus. And right brain parietal is 6.48. This is also almost weakness. So we'll write W. Now this is the way the brain is wired up at the time of birth. This is the distribution of talent at the time of birth. Now this distribution of talent at the time of birth is given in this table at the bottom in the first line. If you see there, the left side is left brain, the right side is right brain and under the left brain five fingers are written as one two three four five under the right brain five fingers are written as one two three four five on the right side now if you see the left brain one first line figure this is 11.39 because left brain of prefrontal portion is 11.39 at birth right brain one under the first number on the right brain the first line shows a figure of 12.42 this is prefrontal right brain. Similarly, if you go to left brain 2, the first line figure shows 14.04, which is postfrontal left brain. And on the right side, under the number 2, the figure is 14.63, which is postfrontal right brain. Come to left brain 3, the parietal left brain 7.56 is what is mentioned here. And similarly, under the number 3, on right, right side, you have 10.13, which is parietal right brain. Under left brain 4, in the first line, you have a figure of 6.21, which is temporal left brain. Under right brain 4, you have a figure of 6.21, which is temporal right brain. Under left brain 5, in the first line, you have a figure of 5.40, which is occipital left brain. And under the fifth number of the right brain, in the first line you have a figure of 6.48, which is occipital right brain. So the first line in this table shows the distribution of talent at the time of birth. The second line is nerve growth factor. Now this shows the rate at which each portion of the brain is going to grow in the first 15 years by default. Now what is the meaning of by default? Brain is connected to the eyes. Everything that the child sees with that the brain grows. 
brain is connected to the ears everything that the child hears with that the brain grows brain is connected to the body so all the activity that the child does with that the brain grows brain grows in three ways by seeing by hearing or by doing now in every home the child is going to see something hear something or do something with that default activity this would be the rate of growth in the first 15 years of the child's life by default 90% of this growth would happen in the first 6 years because brain develops 90% in the first 6 years so 90% of this growth would happen in the first 6 years it is for this reason that any improvement in weakness or any strengthening of strength is possible maximum in the first 6 years because that is the time when 90% of the brain is growing so we can improve any weakness we can strengthen any strength to any degree in the first 6 years the earlier we start the higher are the chances of improvement in this second line in the nerve growth factor one represents the birth position and point decimal after decimal whatever is there that is the percentage growth that is going to happen by default for this child in this particular area so as you can see in the second line some areas are growing at 15% some are growing at 20% some areas are growing at 75% and 68% as well so all the portions of the brain grow at different rates and this first line multiplied by the second line is the figure given in the third line which is the final position that would happen at 15 years by default by design this growth rate can be changed how can you change by design the growth rate you can make the child see something or hear something or do something which will exercise a particular part of the brain more than normal brain grows by use so the more you use any part of the brain the more you are increasing the intelligence of the brain in that particular area so therefore if we start early enough we can improve any weakness in the child we can strengthen any strength of the child to any degree if the child is young if the child is beyond 6 years of age between 6 and 15 we can improve weaknesses by about 10 to 15 percent we can strengthen the strengths also by about 10 to 15 percent if the child is already beyond 15 years of age we cannot improve any weakness but we can identify the god given strength in the child and using that we can plan a course of higher studies for the child which will match with his talents at 24 25 we can make a career choice some children are good for industry some children are good for job some children are good for profession some children are good for trade so we can identify the talent profile and accordingly choose the right career beyond that for a businessman at the age of about 30 35 if we do this report we can decide which are the activities of the business that the person should do himself and which are the activities of the business which the person should outsource for example if a person does not have good interpersonal skills he should not be doing marketing he can outsource it to a marketing manager who can do it better than him similarly if you have good logical skills good negotiation skills then you should handle purchase if you have good leadership skills then you should plan the future of your business if you have good managerial skills then you are efficient at managing the operations so we can choose what jobs to be done by the person himself what jobs the person should be outsourcing these are the various uses of this report there is one more key information available in the report of your child look at the two left side boxes from the brain picture the prefrontal portion is on the lower side the postfrontal portion is on the upper side the two letters on the postfrontal portion just before the numbers you can have in this case the letters are 80 and 80 this means arch type of fingerprint now arch type of fingerprint means it has infinite potential now infinite potential for an arch type of fingerprint exists for first eight years 
and this infinite potential will be actualized directly in proportion to the amount of exposure the child gets in the first eight years of his life. Arch type of fingerprints do not have default rate of growth. If the exposure is not there, they will not grow, they will remain as they are. If there is more exposure, they will grow more and if there is far, far more exposure, they will grow very, very high. There is no limit to the amount of growth you can achieve in arch type of fingerprints. The two fingerprints in the prefrontal portion, they have a letter of U in this particular case. U stands for Alnar. Alnar means shunk. A person who has Alnar type of fingerprints in both his thumbs, this person will be an impressionable person. So his thinking, his point of view, his decisions, his opinions, his habits would be influenced mostly by the people with whom he spends most of his time. He's like a sponge. He absorbs all his thoughts. He